Hello everybody and welcome to Jack's Corner. I'm Tarzan Bonanno and with me as always is Jack Figgle. But today we interrupt your regularly scheduled program to inform you about the event that happened in Washington, D.C. yesterday. Since we are recording on the Monday, this will be released. Jack, how are you doing? Morning, Tarzan. Glory to Jesus Christ. Glory to him forever. How are you today? I'm good. How are you? Uh, recovering. <laughs> long weekend? Yeah, it was, it, was, uh, it was long and intense and joyful and sad and all at, all at once. Fun. Oh, and it was busy. <laughs> well, when they hear about the event, I'm sure they'll understand. Yeah. Uh, so, well, um, let's start with a couple of weeks ago. I got an invitation from Metropolitan Archbishop Boris Gudziak to attend uh, the Divine Liturgy of the Permanent Synod of the Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church that is meeting in Washington this week and that they were having, having an opening liturgy uh, yesterday, Sunday, March 3rd, at the Ukrainian National Shrine of the Holy Family, uh, adjacent to the St. John Paul II Shrine, and up the street from the Basilica of the Immaculate Conception. Uh, mm -hmm. The big, big three uh, places that I frequent when I have big events of my own. Uh, the retreat house that we use for the Oriental Lumen Conferences is snuggled in between the JP2 shrine and the Ukrainian shrine. So they're all all three right there together. I mean, if it's uh, snuggled so, in between them, I think it fits since the whole goal. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the uh, Ukrainian National Shrine is a place I'm well familiar with, and uh, uh, the invitation was to come and attend. And um, I thought it was going to be somewhat uh, secret because of security for his beatitude, Major Archbishop Sviatoslav, the head of the Synod, who was the main celebrant, because there had been death threats and announced assassin, uh, assassination attempts by the Russians against him as a leader of the Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church in Kiev. My goodness. Um, I would expect and, a lot of security, too. And, yeah, so um, uh, I I didn't realize that it was going to be quite so open to the public, but it was. And uh, I was being invited down because I'm on somebody's list somewhere. Uh, and um, so I wrote, when I learned of it, I, I wrote to the rector of the shrine, uh, and who's also the rector of the seminary that's next door, the Ukrainian Catholic Seminary of St. Joseph at, and offered to video record the liturgy uh, if they didn't have anyone else arranged. Because I've done that in the past when they've had special events there, uh, the synod meeting 10 or 15 years ago when, when Cardinal Lubomir Hussar was the head of the church, and uh, once or twice when Archbishop, uh, Major Archbishop Patriarch Sviatoslav has come. Um, anyway, um, I offered, and I never heard anything back uh, until I get a phone call Thursday from Father Robert inviting me to uh, re record, but then he asked if I could live stream. And I said, yes, I could, but only within certain limits and so forth. And he said, well, that's fine. That's all we need is just broadcast this. And I said, it's not going to be multi-camera. I don't have a mixer. Uh, just, you know, it's going to be one camera. And he said, well, that's good enough. All we want to do is be able to broadcast it. So I said, fine, uh, and do you have a Zoom account that we can use? And he said, I don't think so. Uh, I said, well, I have one that only goes to 10 people. I'm guessing this is going to need more than 10 uh, once we announce it. So I will investigate what it'll cost to get more. I can do that on a short-term basis with the Zoom license. So I said, I'll get back to you. And he said, fine. So I researched it Thursday night and Friday morning. I emailed him with the bad news that um, adding uh, enough uh, licenses over the hundred that I get uh, for viewing 
to 500 was going to cost something like 80 or 90 dollars but to go beyond 500 to like a thousand was like 200 300 dollars and to go to 3000 was like 500 dollars and to get to 5000 which is what i kind of thought we might need if this was going to be broadcast and made available to ukrainians around the world um that to do a thousand seat license was a thousand dollars. No, sorry, five thousand seat license was a thousand dollars. And I said, I can't afford that kind of money. Are you going to reimburse me? Well, then I got a phone or an email from a lady who said the Arch Eparchy in Philadelphia has a license already for five hundred seats, so they will set up the Zoom meeting. And I said, fine. All I have to do is connect my cameras to the Zoom meeting. And then you can announce it. And they said, well, can you connect to the YouTube channel of our church in Kiev uh, to do live YouTube? And I said, well, I've never done it before. And if you can interface the feed from Zoom to YouTube, then yeah, you can you can set it up to do that. And all I'm gonna do be is a, a Zoom uh, panelist, and we will, you know, set Zoom up to watch only my camera, and uh, it should work. Um, but I said, if we're going to do that, I want to test it ahead of time, not the morning of. <laughs> uh, so we agreed to meet Saturday morning. Uh, they set up a Zoom test uh, meeting, uh, and uh, we went down. I went down with my uh, with my laptop and my 4K camera that has the HDMI output you need to do live streaming. And uh, we uh, took us an hour to get everything, you know, parameterized right and the Zoom set up and all that stuff to work. And then to get the audio to work so it didn't do feedback and all that stuff. And then to test it so that we knew it was working. Anyway, after a couple hours on Saturday, we indeed got it to work, and we were all set. So you got it on YouTube, or no? Uh, well, I don't know. Uh, all I know is that Sunday morning, uh, I got it. I got hooked up to the Zoom uh, session that was created for the Sunday event, and uh, I had my laptop uh, at the pew, uh, and I figured out the best strategic place to locate myself. Uh, in order to use the camera to get as much of the liturgy as possible uh, and still be able to, uh, you know, not move uh, because I had to be hooked up to the laptop uh, throughout all this. And, uh, you know, you can't have a huge HDMI cable running around as you move around with the camera. So, so I picked a spot which was about four pews back from the front um, where there's a little indentation where the pews, you know, uh, separate for a wider opening up front and uh, set that up as my reserve space uh, and uh, hooked up my, my 4K camera. And then uh, I prepped all of my other cameras uh, on Saturday night with uh, cleaning off the old videos uh, charging them all up with battery power. And then we, I went down and uh, James Hughes, my part-time assistant, uh, went with me and he walked all around the building, set up, setting up the cameras uh, to shoot different angles. So we have a little bit of video from the choir loft. Uh, we've got a couple of cameras up front shooting back at the audience. And then James walked around in a cassock so he didn't look out of place. Uh, shooting a walk around video uh, of the processions and other movable parts, and then went into the sanctuary to get close ups of the consecration and the anaphora and all that stuff. And I sat in the pew, uh, started with the procession down the main aisle, uh, and then uh, swung around. And I was about three feet from Major Archbishop Sviatoslav, his beatitude. Uh, for the first part of the liturgy, because in the Byzantine liturgy, 
the presiding hierarch sits in a chair in the middle of the center aisle towards the front of the church. Uh, and uh, while the antiphons are being sung and the initial litanies are led by the deacon, uh, the hierarch uh, presiding sits there. And then at the time of the entrance with the gospel is when in the traditional Chrysostom liturgy, the celebrant actually enters the altar. He doesn't go in until then. And there's a blessing with candles. Uh, and so I was very close for all that right there in the front of the church. And then I was relatively close uh, to aim between the, uh, through the uh, royal doors uh, for the consecration and the rest of the liturgy. And then likewise, I was up close uh, so I could zoom in on uh, the patriarch giving the sermon uh, from the front of the church. And so rather than a normal live stream where you have a camera up in the choir loft that has a wide angle view of the whole church and you can't hardly see anything except a big crowd of people, I was up close uh, and I think I think it turned out pretty good. Um, what was a little uh, scary was they told me that uh, the YouTube channel from Kiev, which is the official Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church YouTube channel, uh, has some 200,000 viewers on a regular basis. And so if the YouTube link worked uh, from our Zoom session, I could see that the Zoom session was working, but we only had about 10 or 20 viewers at any given time, uh, in addition to myself. Uh, so if the YouTube link worked, it might have been the largest broadcast show that OLTV has ever done. Uh, but I had not yet been able to confirm um, that they were able to make that, that link uh, or if they have any analytics of how many people were online watching it yesterday. But uh, anyway, we, we live stream the whole liturgy from Washington for the whole Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church worldwide. Um, and uh, I hope everything worked. Um, I, I did try to search on YouTube last night, looking for it and didn't find anything. Uh, so maybe, you know, in addition to the live stream, maybe it'll take a couple of days for them to uh, post the recording or something. Uh, I'm not sure, oh, I, know. I, I don't deal with YouTube a lot anymore. I have a YouTube channel. I haven't posted to it for a while, um, but, uh, uh, so I don't know what it, it's going to take them to. I'm not, I'm not sure what's, how much time it's going to take them to uh, post something that people can view after the fact. Well, a live stream would have been up and stayed up. Um, there's actually a live tab on every YouTube page that has YouTube. Uh, and oh, hysterically okay. enough, our YouTube, the, the, the OLTV YouTube channel posts at least once a week with uh, <laughs> with these episodes. Oh, okay. <laughs> these go up on our YouTube. It, okay, um, so anyway, uh, it was it was kind of a exciting uh, weekend. Um, we we uh, attempted to record with uh, seven cameras placed all around the church, but uh, I had some technical problems with two of them, and so I think I've only got five uh, videos to pick from now to make an edited video. Uh, I would. I was hoping to have it done in a few days, but I'm, I'm still having trouble getting a couple of the videos to work in uh, the editing software. So uh, uh, everyone uh, come and watch this space or listen to this space next week uh, or in, in, in between sometime this week on OLTV, we will have uh, a recorded version of the liturgy from different camera angles uh, around the church, as well as my my uh, the streaming uh, view, and uh, you can watch the whole thing. It took, uh, I think it lasted about two, a little over two hours, two hours, 15 minutes with the procession in. And then at the end, uh, there were a few speeches. Uh, there were uh, some VIPs who attended. Um, one was the Cardinal Archbishop Wilton Gregory of Washington, D.C. Uh, the local Roman Catholic 
uh, Bishop, uh, his predecessor, uh, Cardinal Whirl, uh, but uh, most importantly was uh, Archbishop Broglio, who is the Archbishop of the Diocese for the Military Services of the Roman Catholic Church. And right now he is the president uh, of the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops, the USCCB, which means uh, in that role, he symbolically was representing the entire Catholic Church of America uh, at this event, which of course, uh, you know, was dedicated to prayer for Ukraine uh, and dedicated to uh, the, the memory of, of the soldiers and the civilians that have lost their lives. Um, and at the end, uh, they both gave some remarks uh, in the Byzantine calendar, yesterday was the um, exaltation of the Holy Cross. And so at the very end of everything, all of the servers, priests, and bishops came out around the tetrapod where there was a relic of the Holy Cross enshrined in usually red carnations or red roses. And uh, there's a special hymn that is sung, uh, We Bow to Your Cross of Christ and we worship your resurrection. And you make a full prostration down to the ground and touch your forehead to the ground. And uh, uh, his beatitude, Archbishop Sviatoslav and all the bishops did that, got down to their hands and knees and bowed to the ground. And I got it all on film mm -hmm. um, from my perch standing right next to them. So people are gonna wanna see that when it gets up there yeah and unfortunately well it's easy to find it's like in the last five minutes <laughs> so it's a, it's a very it's a very 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 end and i have the entire homily of his beatitude um uh, included so uh it's it's the entire liturgy even from the very beginning when um the procession comes to the front of the church uh, there was a group of small children that greeted his beatitude uh, with bread and salt, uh, and he chatted with them for a few minutes uh, at the back of the church before he came up to uh, to start the liturgy with the blessing of the candles. So it was all very dramatic. It was very, very uh, moving. Uh, it was a great experience. And uh, uh, I will uh, know in a, in a day or two how well the editing and all the film came out when I get to look at it all. Uh, it's, it's as they say, in the mixing room right now, and uh, uh, we'll, uh, uh, it'll take uh, a few days to get it all edited and merged together, and uh, then we'll uh, you know, be able to uh, make a, a video that goes from camera to camera, depending on where the action is. Yep. All right. So that, that was my weekend. It was uh, kind of exciting, and... So, yeah, I, I decided we should cut into our regular sequence of patriarchal visits and talk about this much more timely event. And uh, perhaps the uh, if the YouTube connection worked and they did indeed broadcast it from Kiev to all the Ukrainians around the world, it was the largest broadcast show of, uh, of Oriental and television. All right. Does that conclude everything? Yep. That's it. That's the story. All right. Well, then, thank you all for coming to this episode of Jack's Corner. We And we look forward to seeing you again next week when we get back to the uh, Patriarch Bartholomew meetups. Um, as it stands for there, that is all for today. Thank you for coming, and God bless. <laughs>